My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll be one of my friends. I'm just trying to make some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach you, get you to be a great manager of your own money. So call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Sometimes it feels like nothing works. Valuation, no. Sentiment, no. Earnings, no. And when you get that feeling, you know what you have to do? You have to buy, buy, buy. Buy stocks. Not sell them, because it's almost never as bad as it seems. We're just today where the averages plunge before turning around later in the day with the Dow ultimately finishing up 99 after being down more than 1,100 points. That's going to be advancing 0.28% after being down hideously. And then the Nasdaq gaining 0.63% from an incredible low. All right, now it wasn't as stunning as an 18-second Chiefs victory march. It was a phenomenal comeback, though, and one that might have staying power because a lot of people who couldn't take pain any longer are now out of the building. At the bottom today, the sellers weren't just afraid of the bear. They were afraid of a recession. The market goes down endlessly when there are recession worries, but it almost always overshoots. The proprietary oscillator that I follow from the S&P hit minus 7 today, which is a level where you have to hold your nose and buy something because we almost always get an oversold bounce from that level. In challenging times like this, I rely on both my own history of giving up at the bottom three decades ago, as well as relying on the S&P 500 oscillators. I did this very morning on my morning meeting program with Jeff Marks, proprietary to club members, that would have had you do this as we sure did with abandon right at the bottom. The reason why I am in, inclined to want to buy is that I don't think we're in a recession. Now, people want to sell right here. And the reason why they want to sell right here is that they want to get rid of the pain. OK, now getting rid of pain is an emotional issue. I've gotten rid of pain in Confessions of a Street Act. You can read a moment where I got rid of pain and how wrong it was. So what you have to do is the opposite, the opposite of pain, which means you have to do some buying. And we did, and did, and did, and did. Now, in recent years, we've had three recession scares. The February 2018 massacre, when stupid VIX options traders made us feel like we were headed for a crash. The late 2018 Jay Powell massacre, when a new Fed chief glibly talked about lockstep rate hikes. And the dawn of the COVID pandemic in early 2020. Each scare seemed unfathomably dangerous at the time, just like today. It's never easy to put in a buy order and be down a dollar by the time you get the report, especially when you're playing with an open hand, as we do for the CNBC Investing Club. But that's what happened at noon today. We look like idiots for a half hour. Geniuses at the bell. You have to anticipate the bottom because they can happen in the blink of an eye, like we saw today. The sellers ran out of firepower. And we got a classic crescendo bottom, also known as a selling climax. Right now, some investors have an unshakable belief that when Fed Chief Powell speaks on Wednesday, he'll take a much harder line than we've seen before because inflation is so out of control. They think he'll use harsh words that will more than justify the recent sell-off. Of course, you also have to factor in Ukraine. Yes, that's a tough situation. The futures were looking up last night, right before President Biden told our diplomats to evacuate their families, which sure makes it sound like a war could be on the cards. Uh, more on Ukraine later. But make no mistake, this market is gripped by the fear that J-PAL wants its economy to slow down in order to break the inflationary spiral, and he will do that, and it will hurt a lot of our businesses. So why not just sell here if you really like the, you know, if you really want them, you buy them back, right? You buy them back after Powell speaks. Maybe the next day. Maybe the end of Wednesday. Well, that's what many, many managers did today in the morning. They dumped, they dumped, they dumped, they capitulated, hoping to be able to buy it back Wednesday. At the time, it seemed like a very rational approach, but since when is stock market rational? For example, this market at its ugliest factored in a tremendous amount of fear that could only be handled by those with ice water in their veins, regular Patrick Mahone types, or those with a plan. The Andy Reid types who diagram ahead know they need what they need to do and know they need to buy when stocks hit the right levels on the way down. That's a form of discipline. It's a discipline for me. It's worked in practically every downturn except the Great Recession. It certainly worked well today. So you have to ask yourself, are we really looking at a second Great Recession here or simply a garden-variety Fed-induced downturn? 
I don't think Jay Powell will destroy the economy in order to save it. I want to give him some credit here because he's learned a lot in his last four years on the job. I doubt he'll repeat the mistake he made in 2018. We know Powell has changed his philosophy since then. He's a lot more accommodative. So why don't the inflation need, needs to see that? Again, there's a fear factor. People don't want to wait for Powell to blow us all up because the companies that are reporting could do it for us. You don't get a stock like 3M going down to the point where it yields a 3.5 percent uh, a nice chunk of change, unless Wall Street thinks they're going to cut numbers. You don't see Microsoft falling this far from its highs as did midday, unless they're going to have a miserable quarter. At least that's what the bears thought until the close. My sense on earnings is a lot more positive. We've already seen some great numbers from Procter & Gamble, from Bank of America, from a host of regional banks, and just tonight, IBM. In fact, only Netflix and J.P. Morgan have truly disappointed in a big way. I just don't see earnings collapsing at all. Maybe I'm irrationally bullish, but I prefer to think of it as being disciplined and opportunistic. The same kind of discipline that had my travel trust sell DuPont much, much higher simply because the stock had run much and I wanted to be able to not be greedy and cash out. The same discipline that told me to buy the oils when everybody else figured that rally was over. But discipline is hard. It, it takes guts to step up and buy something when it feels like the sky is falling or sell somebody something when everybody loves it. Discipline is why I told you to sell GameStop at 400 a year ago, something that's earned me the, what could be the enemy of a lifetime, which, of course, I actually enjoy because I'm a masochist because it was the perfect time. It's why I keep warning you to steer clear of nearly every one of the 600-odd companies, SPACs, that came public last year. I have nothing good to say about them. Oh, sure, the Bulls had some props today. This morning, two buyers surfaced to acquire a boring old chain like Kohl's after one hedge fund manager took a stake in and suggested the change of a board of directors. The housing stocks rallied after being down 24 percent on Friday. But in a typical recession, they drop more than 30 percent. But that was a pretty good showing. The retailers put on a good show, too, unlike what should have happened if we were going to recession, right? You don't get Home Depot nearly 15 bucks if the economy's about to roll over. The most bullish thing that happened today, the big cap tech stocks that let us down, like Adobe and ServiceNow, are running at a very good clip. Both up more than 3% today, ServiceNow reports this week. I don't want to be fooled because the same thing happened last week, but it feels a lot better. Finally, let me introduce you to one more concept that I mentioned earlier. It's called the crescendo. And that's when we get total capitulation, as represented by nine stocks down for every one stock up. A crescendo is a terrific buy signal because this is when everybody who was going to sell finally exits the building, the cowards. The selling climax occurred just when the Dow was down 1,100 points, and it was like people dumping stock, because they, and then they just ran out of stock to sell. They were so scared, they had sold everything. At the bottom today, I could argue that we had a real crescendo of selling, and we might have a rally, followed by a retest of that crescendo that will hold. Almost every fast bottom, meaning one that's not drawn out like 2009, comes replete with a crescendo. In this midday collapse, the Dow down more than 1,100. Wow, it sure felt like it. Crescendos occur when the pain is so great that no one can handle the pressure, and there's an overwhelming sense that you'll be crushed if you stay in the market, which is why I showed you that video, because that is what the CNBC Investing Club is about and why you should be in it. We haven't seen one of these crescendos since 2020 because dip buyers kept, making them, uh, kept them from happening. They represent much more of an exhaustion bottom. The sellers have exhausted themselves, not the buyers being opportunistic like a dip buy. That may be exactly what happened today. Again, these kinds of bottoms tend to be revisited as the S&P has now fallen 10 percent from its highs. And those who bought at the lows today will scalp their gains between 10 and 11 tomorrow. But the bottom line, if you put in today's weakness, as I've been telling you to do and show you time stamp for club members only, if you bought into what you're like the crescendo of selling, then I think you'll end up being happy with your decision. And I think you'll be positively surprised on Wednesday when we find out that Jay Powell knows how to handle himself in a crisis. Doc in New York. Doc. Hey, Jimmy Chunga, the hardest working man for the people. How are you, sir? I am trying. I'm working. I worked all weekend except for when the games run. Now I'm back <laughs> working tonight. What's going on? Well, I want to get your take on a company that I loved. Last month, they announced a $250 million accelerated buyback program. They are the champions of the Shop at Home catalog. Technically broke out of a downward triangle, bullish divergence on the RSI, VSCO, a.k.a. Victoria's Secret. Tell me you love the future of this company as much as I do. Doc, I really do. I think you've nailed it. I like Bath & Body Works, too. This was a terrific buy by you, and I can't believe that you got it, and I congratulate you. I think you're going to make a lot of money. Now, Ed, thank you for the chill comments. Let's go to Jeff in California. Jeff. Hey, Jimmy Chill. What you think of that roller coaster ride today, man? Minus 1,100 on the Dow and ends up green, baby. Well, down at 1,100, what happened is a lot of people jumped off the roller coaster. I prefer to complete it and then actually take it higher again. 
But what can you do? Absolutely, man. What can you do? A, I mean, there's a lot of people like ride. to jump off at the top. I, I, it's painful, too. What's up? Hey, I went online and I checked several sources concerning the company named Cloudflare, such as Tip Rank, Zach, and MarketBeat. All of them are stating that Cloudflare Net is a strong buy right now. All are calling it a high fly momentum stock. Most of the analysts were raving about the strength of this company, Net, or Cloudflare. Right, but right. Jim, Jim. I'm extremely concerned because Cloudflare, like most of the stocks, has fallen 41% in a month. So question, is it a buy, sell, or hold? Okay, it's, you know, I happen to think Matt Prince is terrific, and I think their business is on fire. But I'm only recommending stocks right now that are making money because we got so many problems on our hands. The one thing I don't want to put you into is a company that can't make money. But I thank you for the kind comments. If you bought into today's weakness, as I advise, I think you're going to end up being pretty happy. Oh, man, buddy, tell you, last month, CMC revealed its next generation 50 index, putting the company's millennials know and love into focus. But with a change of tune in the market that I just talked about, could winners prevail within the list? I'm going to give you my top 10 from the index. Then crypto has crumbled along with the broader market. But what happens if it's at the bottom? I'm going to go off the charts to find out. I think you'll like it. And Flexport has its finger on the pulse of the port situation throughout the country. And I'm getting a, a read on the state of the industry with the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.